So let's get at it. Let's get with it. Let's do it. So the question we've been working on all week, what is the derivative? And so as we know, the derivative, there we go. Derivative is the, it's the slope of the tangent line, right? Slope of the tangent line. It's the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, it's the limit as delta x approaches zero. Oops, I need to write that because I can't do both things at once. The limit as delta x approaches zero of the f of x plus delta x minus the f of x all over delta x, right? That's the definition of the derivative. It means these things, and so let's, let's get to it. So what's the derivative of a constant function? A like constant function. So what's the slope? of a tangent line. Remember, it's a constant function, so how's this thing changing? That's the instantaneous rate of change of this thing. The instantaneous rate of change of this thing is zero. So the derivative of a constant is zero. And so we might write that if we were to write a rule. The derivative with respect to x of a constant is zero. Second? All right. What's the derivative of y equals x? What's the derivative of this? How's this thing changing? What's the slope of this particular little line here? Okay, the slope is 1, right? It's the y equals x sort of thing. So the slope is 1, the derivative. So the derivative with respect to x of x is 1. Okay, 1. That's the slope. What's the derivative of x to some power? That's the question that we want to get to because we want to try to figure out a way to simplify this. So let's use our little, uh, let's use what we know. So we use the definition of the derivative. So we're looking at the limit as delta x approaches zero of x plus, get rid of that, Mary, x plus delta x to the n minus x to the n all over delta x. Okay, I can try to get this on this page. So that's what we're that's what we're looking at right there. Boom, a little narrower. So we're going to expand this out. We're going to use Pascal's triangle. We know that the first number in any row of Pascal's triangle is one. Okay, we know that the next number is the row number n. We know that we've got a bunch of stuff in between. We know that at the other end, so we've got uh, you know plus dot 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 dot. We've got plus, and we've got uh, yeah, what am I trying to do? Oh yeah, so we've got plus. We've got another n on this end, and we've got a 1 down here, right? Okay, so we know that this is going to be x to the nth power. This is going to be x to the n minus 1 power, plus a bunch of other things. We're not going to have an x term here, right? And so forth and so on, and then this is going to be probably what? This is going to be x to the first. Going this way, we're going to have delta x to the nth power, delta x to the n minus 1 power, all the way down here. First term and of delta x, we're not going to have anything there. So we got a bunch of stuff going on, all pluses in between. Okay? Then we're going to subtract x to the nth power. We're going to divide that by delta x. Look familiar? It's narrower every time. And we're still taking the limit as delta x goes to zero. Okay. So notice the color pen, red. Boom, gone, right? As it's happened there every time, we've sort of eliminated the original function. By, uh, with the subtraction here. Notice now that everything that's left has a delta x in it, right? So I can factor delta x out of all of these terms, and I'm left with nx to the n minus 1 plus a whole bunch of other stuff, and everything that's left has a delta x in it. So delta x, and this has got something with the delta x to the, to the first, and so forth and so on. Everything's got a delta x in it except for this very first term. Divide by delta x, cancel, start using the same color. Everything that's back here, well, let me use the magic pen so I don't, uh, so everything from here on in goes away, okay? And the only thing that's left, oops, is that, ooh, that was pretty clever, is that, okay? That's how it works out. That's been our pattern, magic pen. So, what is blank screen do in here? The derivative of x to any power, n x to the n minus 1 power. Okay, n x to, oh god, I'm still using the invisible magic pen. I'm so embarrassed. 
Oh, right, let's try a different one. Uh, so n x to the n minus 1,000. Magic pen should be in purple, just so you can tell the difference. Okay, so all this stuff that we've been doing, wait, I need to make a guest appearance, because right now you're going, hey, you could have told us that several days ago. So all this stuff that we've been doing, we've done based on the logic, based on when we started with the uh, the, pe the fact that we went to the secant line and we went to a logical way to go about it. We changed the secant line into a tangent line using the limit process. And it made sense. We were able to work through it algebraically and get an answer. And it turns out that someone discovered that the easier way to do that is just with this rule. They said, hey, look, every single time we do all this work, this happens. So we want to be able to use that rule. And, you know, there's a sort of a method for going through that rule the first time I'm back is that, you know, if you don't know the hard way, you don't appreciate the easy way, you know, you'd be all whining, you're going to multiply and subtract, it's really difficult. Okay, so, sorry, back to this stuff. So, the power rule, n, x to the n minus 1. So, we can use that power rule with all these things. So, look at the problems that we've been working on the last couple of days in class. The derivative with our power rule is that, well, the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. Okay, so, f primed was 2x, and that's the derivative of that part. The derivative of 9, which is a constant, is 0. Okay, plus 0. That's what we got. The derivative of x squared still is 2x. The derivative of x is the other one, is 1. The derivative of the constant, 0. Okay, f primed. Derivative 3x squared. Okay, bring the exponent down in front. Drop one from the x, drop one from the exponent. Same thing here, 2x to the first. We don't write to the first. So all those things, the rules that we did, we went through the process, we used the secant line, we got it all to work out the way we wanted to. Okay? Here we go. The constant multiple rule. So the constant multiple rule says basically if I have a constant times a function, okay, um, so I don't know, I guess we'll go with the derivative of a constant times a function is just the constant times the derivative of that function. Okay, derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative. So what's the derivative, if we look at this one, what's the derivative of x? It's 1, so this is just 3 times 1, or 3, minus 2x. So it's a problem we did with, with some 2's, in, or with t's, I think. Okay, uh, the sum or difference rule basically says the derivative with respect to x of the f of x plus the g of x, two functions added, plus, minus, minus, plus, it's just f primed of x plus or minus p primed of x. Okay, that's what we did on this one. Constant multiple rule, sum or difference rule. Okay, back to the thimble thing. So, you know, the stuff that you had, that's probably what you might have picked up from pre-calculus. Okay, we're going to pick it up quite a bit. So what about these problems right here? Okay, what about 1 over x squared? We did that one. What about 4 over the square root of x? We did that one. What's the deal with those? Okay, so in order to be able to deal with those, we need a little help from our good friend Dora the Explorer. Okay, and if you remember Dora the Explorer, she goes on a little journey. It's got three parts usually, and those three parts help you uh, to remember what's going on. Uh -oh, we're going berserk here. See if we can get to Dora really quickly. I'm going to feel this is going to be a uh, longer video than we want. All right, is it not opening? Is it going to open ever? Maybe. Bond? No. Ah, time is wasting. Where's Dora? Alright. Well, that was supposed to link. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause for a second. Oh, wait. There she comes. I'm not going to pause for a second. She's coming up. Okay. So Dora the Explorer. Dora. Whoa. I have this thing like 11 times now, don't I? Okay. It's opening again. Ah. I think we're done. So, patience. So Dora the Explorer, on our little mission for calculus, tells us that we have to rewrite, differentiate, simplify. What does that mean? Rewrite, differentiate, simplify. So rewrite means to rewrite the problem in a different form, okay, so that one of our rules works. What's well, another way to write 1 over x squared? Another way to write 1 over x squared is x to the negative 2. So that's my rewrite. Okay, now we can use my rule because it fits the power of something like something to the nth power. So I bring the exponent down in the front, uh, subtract one from the exponent, and it becomes that. Okay, so that's my differentiate.
<coughs> and then finally, so this part here is now f prime of x, by the way. Okay, f prime of x. And then the last part is to simplify. And to simplify, we want to get rid of negative exponents. We want to make it look nice. So this just becomes back to 2 over x cubed. Okay, bring the exponent down in front, subtract one from the exponent. That's the rule, right? F mu to the n minus 1. And so then we simplify. So Dora is going to tell us every single time to rewrite, differentiate, and simplify. She's posted in the room, you'll see her. Okay, how do we rewrite this one? Well, this is x to the 1 half. So we're going to write 4 over x to the 1 half. Still not in a good form. So we're going to rewrite it as 4x to the negative 1 half. Okay, that's the rewrite. Differentiate. I'm not going to write it every time. 1 half, negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Subtract 1 from negative 1 half. You're at negative 3 halves. Simplify. Negative 2 over x to the 3 halves. Done. Rewrite, differentiate, simplify. Okay? How many of these do we have open? Let's go to that one. Rewrite, differentiate, simplify. Okay? Something, you know, I don't know, river, mountain, big red chicken. That's what Dora would say. But today she's saying rewrite, differentiate, simplify. Okay? So on these, I think it's the last couple of last ones. No, oh, we have one big nasty one there. So we're going to rewrite it. So what we need to bear in mind is the only thing we really need to worry about is this exponent. So we rewrite this one as 5 halves x to the negative 3. Okay? This one, probably going to go two steps of rewrite. First, I'm going to make this 5 over 8, like so. And then my rewrite step is 5 eighths x to the negative 3. Okay? See the difference the parentheses make? Make a big difference. So we have to look at what's going on. The only thing we really need to worry about is getting that x out of the denominator. I'm going to leave it to you to do the differentiate and the simplify, and we'll check those, uh, check those tomorrow, see where we are. So rewrite, differentiate, simplify. Okay? Maybe I'll do one. I'll do the top one. You do the bottom one. How's that? Good. Excellent. So we're going to multiply by negative 3. Negative 15 halves. Going to subtract 1 from the exponent. Negative 4. Okay? And then we're going to simplify. So the negative 15 staying up top. The 2 and the x to the 4th going down the bottom. Got to bring the negative 15 out front. That's great. So here's a little more, looks like a complicated problem. If we had to do this the old-fashioned way, it would be terrible. But for us today, it's not bad. We're still going to do the rewrite. So the rewrite, 5x squared. The, we're still rewriting. So this is going to become 3x to the 1 3rd. We're still rewriting 6x to the negative 3. So I would want you to rewrite the entire thing, because I know you could probably look at this and do the derivative, but you don't want to do part derivative, part rewrite, get all rewritten, and then do all differentiate, and then do all simplify, so that you're clearly labeling what's going on. When we're taking a derivative, tell me we're taking a derivative with f primed or y primed. Using an f primed a lot today, 10x plus 3 times a third is x, uh, subtract 1 from the exponent, 3rd minus 1 is negative 2 thirds, plus 6 times 3, okay, so that's going to be minus 18x to the negative 4. So there's my rewrite, I differentiate, I simplify, it's going to be 10x plus 1 over x to the 2 thirds, we don't need to go back to radical notation, minus 18 over x to the 4. Rewrite, differentiate, let's try it again. Rewrite, differentiate, simplify. Okay? What else we have? Beware, beware, beware. STDs. Okay, we want you to, this is a public service announcement from uh, Calculus to you. Beware of STDs. Okay, in this case, STDs are talking about single term denominators. Okay, when we see something like that, we want to avoid STDs. Okay, we want to avoid single term denominators. This is a single term denominator. How do I know? Because there's a single term in the denominator. So what we do is we break this apart. 6x cubed over x squared plus 5x squared over x squared minus 7x over x squared. Okay? Then we so we're still get this this thing. We're going to simplify a little. 6x cubed divided by x squared is just 6x. 5x squared divided by x squared is just 5. 7x squared divided by or 7x divided by x squared is 7 over x 
I'm going to take a big leap here, and I'm going to make that 7x to the negative 1. Okay, we're still looking at the function, f. f. Now, I'm going to look at f prime. I'm going to take my derivative. Derivative of 6x is 6. Derivative of 5, a constant, is 0. Derivative of this negative 7, this minus thing here, is so a negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Subtract 1 from the exponent, x to the negative 2. Are we done? No, we're not. We've got to do that simplify step. 6 plus 7 over x squared. Okay, beware STDs. You see the STD, don't fall into a trap. Break it apart. Okay, attack it piece by piece. Carry that far enough. Okay, don't look at that. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff here that we're working on. It's the power rule, and then we're going to use that power rule. If you don't forget Dora the Explorer, you will uh, be all set. Your life will be good. You will rewrite. You will differentiate. You will simplify. Okay? I know it's a lot. Okay, I'm talking fast, and I probably went way over the 15-minute uh, mark. I apologize for that. But this is the base stuff. This is what we're talking about when we're saying, um, saying you know, investing in the basics. This is the basic stuff. Rewrite, differentiate, simplify. If you're not sure about how to change uh, radical, how to change radicals to fractional exponents or how to deal with negative exponents, we'll work on that. Okay? So, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you learned something. If you have questions, please see me tomorrow. Okie dokie. 16 minutes, 40 seconds. Not half bad. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow.